Hey there, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and welcome back to another episode of Mixcraft Quick Tips, the series where we take a look at common questions and helpful tips in Mixcraft to improve your workflow and your productions. In today's video, we're here to answer one of the top questions we see, which is how do I get better recordings? And in today's video, I wanted to share with you five easy and practical tips to get better recordings in your home studio, regardless of your gear or your experience level. These tips apply for everything from vocals to guitars to drums to electric kazoo and accordion and back again, and you should be able to use all of these tips to help get better results in your next session in only a few minutes. To start things off, the first tip is to eliminate any background noise, and this might seem like common sense, but it is something that's very easy to forget. If it's a hot day out and you're running your air conditioning, maybe you have a window open and there's some construction outside, maybe you have a ceiling fan on, maybe you forgot to turn off the coffee pot before you started filming a video and that was kind of getting in the way, these are all little things that can totally ruin the perfect take. Taking just a quick moment before you hit the big red button to check for any loud appliances, ambient noises, or just other things that might get in the way is a critical step to make sure that you're not going to have a giant headache later. Moving right along, tip number two is to make sure that you're recording at a good level, and this is something that's maybe a little bit misunderstood because gain staging is a very important step in the recording process, and even if you have the best studio in the world with the best gear, if you don't gain stage things properly, you could end up with kind of a giant gumbled mess. In this project here today, you can see I've got two recordings, one that was too quiet and one that's at a proper level, and one of the things about recording at a proper level is making sure you have a good signal-to-noise ratio. Let's take a quick listen to the recording that's too quiet, and let's take a listen to the one that was recorded at a proper level. One of the problems with recording things too quiet is the signal to noise ratio, because since this was too quiet, we're going to have to lift up the level after the fact, and if we normalize this or increase the level, we're going to have a bad signal to noise ratio, because we're also increasing all that little ambient noise that's in the background of this recording as we bring up the level of the thing we actually want to hear. Let's normalize this take and take another listen to the quiet version now that we've lifted up the level. <laughs> As you can hear, there's some pretty significant background noise. You can even hear a little bit of the metronome, and that's just really not something we want to use. One of the other problems with the bad signal to noise ratio is you can't really remove these things after the fact. Even if you use denoising or things like noise gates or dynamic expanders, one of the problems with a bad signal to noise ratio is these things can't really tell the difference between what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep. So they won't even really end up being all that useful and you're going to have to go back and re-record things, which can be a pretty big waste of time, especially if you're on a deadline. Next up, make sure you're using the right mic for your recording session. Different microphones can have a very drastic impact on the final result because you can have something that sounds warm and nice with one mic and otherwise sounds very brittle and tinny with another one, even if they're both really nice, expensive mics. If you don't have multiple microphones and maybe haven't even bought your first microphone yet, it's important to take a minute to test out microphones at a music shop if you can, or test them out with a return period just to make sure you're happy with it, and it's going to work in a variety of different cases and act as a good utility mic. To demonstrate this, let's take a listen to a couple different microphones for the same performance. <laughs> Tip number four is maybe something you haven't thought about, and that's choosing the right spot to record in your room. No matter how big your room is, different areas of the room can have different sounds to them. A really easy way to test this once you've got your microphone set up is to just move around to the different positions of your room, maybe in every corner, maybe one in the center, and then pick the spot where things tend to naturally resonate a bit. Let's take a listen to a couple different examples. Finally, make sure you have the mic set up in the right position and try a few different positions because the position, rotation, and orientation of the mic can have pretty significant impacts on the final result. Outside of gain staging, I think this is one of the most critical things to understand about your gear because it helps you address and eliminate problems in a recording. Maybe a vocal doesn't quite sound bright enough unless the mic is really close up. 
Maybe guitars sound too muddy unless it's rotated a little bit off axis, and maybe some mics just sound better a little further away. This is another thing that's really easy to take a few moments to test out before you start committing to your recordings by just altering the mic position, rotation, and orientation and seeing what gives the best results for the performance. Let's take a listen to a couple quick examples. And there you have it, five quick and easy tips that you should be able to do in only a couple moments to help get better results for your next recording session. So I think that wraps everything up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>